I had an awesome time at HubSpot's inbound conference this year. I spoke with a ton of different agencies, consultants, and internal marketing teams about how to best leverage the ClickUp to HubSpot integration. And though there are a ton of different use cases with this integration, one of the most powerful is gonna be adding automation to your onboarding process. And the reason why I believe this is the most powerful piece of this integration is because, let me ask you this question. When are your clients most engaged? The correct answer should be when they give you their credit card information or when they pay you first. That being said, it's extremely important to streamline and speed up this onboarding process to give them a faster time to value. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you step-by-step step through how you can best leverage the ClickUp to HubSpot integration to streamline your onboarding process, make sure nothing slips through the cracks, and make your clients a lot happier. So let's get started. All right, let's jump into ClickUp and then go into HubSpot. There's a few things you're going to want to set up in ClickUp before you jump into HubSpot in terms of just some templates that you're going to, want to have built it, as well as obviously the structure and hierarchy um, as well to make sure all of this works smoothly. So first of all, you want to have the correct ClickUp hierarchy for agencies. If you haven't watched videos we've done in the past, it's always a good starting point. Um, and that's why we have our blueprint process at Zimpal to kind of help build the structure from spaces, folders, lists, custom fields, views, things like that. That's always a big component of ClickUp before you really do anything because you want to make sure that structure is set. However, there's a video I'll pop up in the top right corner that you'll want to watch. I'm um, just for an overview of that um, in terms of the spaces, folders, lists, things you're going to want to have set up. And um, the big piece of this is going to be your delivery space as well as your process library. Those are two critical spaces you need to have set up inside of ClickUp to do any of this with the, the ClickUp HubSpot integration, at least what I'm showing you. So here to walk through this in my delivery space, you're gonna have folders for all of your clients. Um, inside of those client folders are gonna be all the lists where all your tasks are gonna live. These could be service line specific lists or uh, more lists for just retainer versus projects, things like that. So again, that's what we kind of do in the blueprint process at Zempilot. We'll put a link in the description below for you to check that out as well. Um, but in this, um, again, I can have a folder where all the docs and lists and tasks are going to live for each client. In addition to that is going to be a client management list. So this client management list is super important because this is where essentially all the tasks for delivery specific tasks that are not related to a specific client, but also all of your sort of onboarding tasks that you're going to have as well. So we'll go over that in a second, how that works, but you're going to want to have a client management list for that purpose. In addition, obviously, as I mentioned, process library where all your process templates are going to live. In this example, I have this delivery demo space and I have my process templates in here just to make it easy um, to show you what these look like. But again, these process templates that I'm going to show you in a second are going to live in your process library. That's where all of your processes should live. And then you'll upload those to the ClickUp Template Center. That's the initial setup. In addition to that, let's go over the templates. What you're going to want to have is really two main templates. The first one is going to be a client folder template, as you can see here. If I go here, what's going to be included in this is going to be the folder, the list structure, all the views and everything else set up in there. As you'll see here, I have my views at the top. I also have, um, if I go to this onboarding list for my new clients, I'm also going to have all the onboarding tasks ready to go. That way, when I deploy a new client folder, it's going to have all these tasks to make that process very streamlined, make sure nothing slips through the cracks. So I'll show how this process works. Uh, very soon, but you'll see that's uh, the initial setup. So all the lists, um, we can have docs in here as well, just for client overview, meeting notes, keep that all centralized. Um, that's going to be super important to have. So from there, that's going to be my folder template. Again, views, lists, custom fields, um, everything's going to be included in this folder template, make it standardized for each of your clients, as well as I have all of the tasks, initial tasks that you would want after we get over onboarding, then we can put all our other task templates in here. In addition to that, the other template you're gonna to wanna to have, this one's very easy to create, very basic, is gonna be sort of this new client task. All that's really on this is gonna be sort of a short description, um, a checklist for, uh, for creating a new client folder, assigning all of the onboarding tasks. Um, I'd recommend having a Loom video in here to kind of show someone how to do this. Um, this could be assigned to one person, if you have sort of an admin or a central project manager that's going to be in charge of basically setting up all of your client folders in ClickUp um, and on assigning all the onboarding tasks. If you have one person to do that, it makes it a little bit easier in this process, but this is going to be assigned to me. Due date, again, on this template, you're going to choose sort of any due date because we can basically change that on the trigger date with this automation that I'm going to show you. But you also want to put a time estimate and um, also some additional details with custom fields and things like that. 
Um, but those are gonna be the two main templates that you're gonna leverage. In addition to that, now at automation, you're gonna wanna have built in the client management list. And to find automations, if you've never set them up, I can either go to this list right here, you know, go to the list settings, I can click on automations there, or I can go to the top right, you'll see it here as well. Essentially the automation that we're gonna be creating is when a task is created in this client management list, I'm gonna do it from templates or duplicated tasks. That's gonna make it so that every time I leverage this template that you just saw right there, um, it's gonna update the due date. Because you have a due date built into your templates, those due dates, let's say you build your template on September 1st, your due date is September 1st. It might be how you build it out, but we wanna make sure that that due date updates with this HubSpot to ClickUp integration automation. Um, so we want to make sure every time that this is deployed, the due date changes to the trigger date. Essentially, that means this task, which you'll see how this is leveraged again in a second, this task will be assigned to me on the date that we went closed one um, with a deal. So when we won a new deal, this then becomes today. Um, when this is triggered, that way it goes onto my task view right away uh, rather than it being way overdue or, or something else. So we need to make sure again that updates the template due date here. So as you'll see, we go back into the automation. I can also change this up. This could also be here to be days after trigger date. If I wanted it to be a day later or two days later, whatever it may be, well, let's just do on trigger date because that's going to make it easier get it on my task view right away. So again, those are the two templates you're going to have set up. The last thing, um, as well as the automation, the last thing you're going to do is you're going to want to go to the app center in ClickUp and you're gonna to wanna to go find HubSpot and you just need to make sure that the two systems are connected. So you'll be able to connect HubSpot to your ClickUp workspace um, by just going to the App Center here and uh, syncing those two systems up. Um, but after that, then you're really good to go. You have ClickUp set up and ready to kind of streamline this onboarding process. So now that we've gone through all that, let's go into HubSpot and then see how all this works really to bring it to life so it makes sense. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into HubSpot here into my sales deals um, click on deals and you're going to go into your pipelines. So I have here just an example um, demo services pipeline. As we see, not much in here, just Shroot Farms and Dunner Mifflin. Um, but I want to kind of show you how this is all set up um, and then actually move Shroot Farms into closed one to see how the automation works. So what I'm going to do at this stage is I'm going to go into actions up here in the top right. I'm going to go to add pipeline automation. And then as we go, it'll load. And then we're going to go down here um, to this. So you'll see you have the option to, if you've HubSpot a lot before, you probably know all of this, um, but you'll have the opportunity to add a bunch of workflows to each of these stages. So essentially the trigger is when they reach that stage, I can create a workflow from that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go all the way over to closed one right here, and I'm going to do create a workflow. And we just have a few recommended ones. Let's do see more. So there's a lot of options that you have in HubSpot, but we want to connect this to ClickUp. So what we're going to do is you're going to go down to the bottom. And again, you have to make sure those two systems are connected in the app center. Uh, but I'm going to go to click up. And I'm going to see create a folder space, task list, or create a task from template. So I have created that sort of task template that I showed you, um, which again, this is going to live in your process library, but I've created this as a template. And so I want to basically take that and I want to create a task from it. So I'm going to go here and I'm not going to do any of these other ones. I'm just going to create a task from the template. So I'm going to click on that, and now I'm going to go through all of these different options to go ahead and make sure it's all set up correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose my workspace. We have Zen Palette, Choose, or Create a Space. This is going to go into Delivery Space. I have a delivery demo set up. Let's click on that. Choose or Create a Folder. We're not going to choose a folder or create one. Um, as we know, that is a folderless list here, of this client management. It's not in a folder. It's a folderless list, so I don't need to put it into a folder. Um, I don't also don't need to create a list, but I'm going to choose a list. And as you add in more folders with more lists, this will get pretty busy here. Um, but you should only have one client management list. So either search for it. Oh, you see at the top here should be pretty easy to find um, client management list. There we go. And now is where we're going to choose our template. So as you see, mine's right at the top. I named it new client um, example just for, the, for this video, but make sure you have a good naming convention on that so you know what it's called. Um, and I'm going to click on that. And now I can change the task name. So as you can see here, this was a template. Um, the task name is this right now, but I'm able to change that to be more customized to actually instruct someone to do something. Like that's not going to tell me much. Obviously, I can click on that and get more details. But what we want to do 
is first off, I like adding a little emoji here. I like to do the siren. That way this task stands out and we can just do new deal one. Make it exciting. We'll do an exclamation point. Begin onboarding process tour. And then this is where I can do the deal token. So now I can add in this. We'll do select token. We'll do deal name just like that. Insert. So essentially it's just going to be the task going to show up. Siren, new deal one, you get the onboarding process for if this is Shroot Farms, um, that'll show up just like that. So that way it's more customized to this and it makes it super easy to streamline that onboarding process. So when that's all done, we're good to go. We're going to click save. Um, another thing that I also like to do in this is you can also add more things. And the one is going to be, uh, I can do and set a Slack notification. So if I want to come here and what we do is essentially we have a sales channel in Slack. So you can set a notification to a specific channel. If I did sales, um, I can show up there. Where'd it go? Uh, oh, three sales. Essentially, all the new deals um, are sent to that sales channel. That way we can all celebrate. We can all be notified. And so we all know that a new deal uh, just came in to, to close one. So we'll get notified on that. That just makes us all aware um, that that happened. So I always highly recommend sending Slack notifications or um, email notifications, whatever it may be, just so again, everyone's sort of aware they get that message. They knew, know a new deal came in and then whoever's in charge of setting that up will also get the task in ClickUp as well. But highly recommend doing that inside of Slack um, as well, but there's a lot of other automations that you can do um, as well. So feel free to investigate these, but definitely the notification and the task are going to be the most important there. So we have that set up at closed one and now we're, we're good to go back to our pipeline. So we're going to go back to deals here. And we're going to wait for this to load. And so in order for this to actually work, all we really need to do is, is drag over contract sent into closed one. Obviously, we're going to have more details on this. That's going to be helpful for everyone. So just make sure that your your sales teams know knows what to fill out to make sure that it's easy for us to not have a ton of questions um, for them and just make it a very streamlined process. All we need to do now is I'm going to move contract set, Shroot Farms, Consulting into closed one. And then it'll take, honestly, it only takes like 20 or so seconds. If that, all I have to do is go back to my client management list and refresh my screen and that task will show up. So now after I've refreshed my screen, you can see that this task is now here. Um, new deal one, begin onboarding process for Shroot Farms Consulting. So it makes it super easy for me to see who the deal is for, um, what the deal was. We have consulting here. Um, as you'll see, um, we just have our little message. Woohoo, we just got a new client. Please begin the process of creating the folder new tasks for the client. So we can onboard them as quickly as possible. Again, I always recommend having like a Loom video or some other um, additional items in there, make that description better, especially if you're bringing in someone new to do this, um, but have our checklist items of what they need to do, as well as this links out to the HubSpot deal as well. So it makes it super easy for me to get the context that I need without having to ask a bunch of questions. So just make sure the sales team knows what they need to include inside of HubSpot to make sure that's super streamlined and easy for the delivery team to, to know what they're setting up here. Um, but from here, what I'm going to do is once I start this process, I can come here and I'm going to start tracking my time, click on the timer just like that. And now I need to build out the client folder for Shroot Farms. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my delivery space here. We're going to go to templates, browse templates, and I can do new client folder. I'm going to find the example one. Um, we're going to see it right there. Click on it. I'm going to use this template and now I'm going to name it Shroot Farms. That uh, we can remap the dates. This is where it gets super powerful. Go to my start date. I'm going to choose today to be the start date. I can skip the weekends if I want or I'll click on that. I'll just make sure those initial onboarding tasks do not fall on the weekends. Um, don't need to worry about this. They're open no matter what. Um, and then I'm going to go and use the template. So all that's going to do is now I'm going to create uh, the new folder for Shroot Farms. Um, so all I have to do is really refresh your screen um, and that'll be there for you. Give it a second. And after refreshing my screen, I'll see I have Shroot Farms set up. We have all of my um, lists here as well as the uh, tasks for onboarding. So all I need to do is come in here. Um, you'll see the onboarding tasks and I can either remap the dates if I have to, if any of these kind of got thrown off or if I didn't skip the weekends on them. Um, so that's all good. It looks like our task dates are fine. We're starting today with the first one. Um, then I can come here to the folder level. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the society view that I have set up in my folder template. And what this is doing is because I put this delivery role on all the tasks, 
I'm able to easily assign this out. So I can come here, I can click whoever the strategist is. I'll go here and say I'm the strategist, I'll assign this to myself. And then I can come down and scroll. We'll see whoever the account manager is, we need to assign that, and whoever the admin is, sales, senior strategist, so on and so forth. Do all that process, make sure it's all assigned out to everyone, and then we're really good to go. We're really good to start our onboarding tasks. In addition, we come and we can name these um, documents as well. So if there's anything, um, I would always tell the the sales team to come in here and, and add a client notes, or if there's a client questionnaire, a loom overview, things like that. If we have any additional details we need to put right here to make it easy, um, but I'll go through and I'll, I'll rename this to uh, Troop Farms Docs. And we're pretty much all set uh, for Troop Farms to um, start seeing value from us and getting that onboarding process done uh, very quickly. So that's really how you utilize that automation. Again, it's more of just creating the task because I need to make sure um, that this uh, gets done. Um, otherwise, then there's kind of a disconnect, people communicating whether the automation just working and sending that out to the Slack channel as well as creating this task. If this gets done, it's gonna make it way faster. And then if I have that client folder and, and onboarding process already built out, it's gonna make everything uh, much easier. Um, there's obviously more that you can do. Uh, things that we leverage are utilizing HubSpot payment pages. Um, you can leverage a HubSpot payment page. They fill that out. Then they go directly to a ClickUp intake form. Um, that ClickUp intake form has all the fields or things that we need to collect. That ClickUp intake form, once it's submitted, it creates a deal record directly inside of our CRM list here. So in this deals list, create another video on how to build a ClickUp CRM as well that you'll see. It should be in the top right corner to click on that to watch that video to understand um, how to build a ClickUp CRM but that's gonna create the CRM deal record and then it's gonna directly create that onboarding task um, that we just talked about in that client management list. Um, so that can even streamline that process even further. It, all the automations are built in the back end as well, but just redirecting to an intake form, creating the CRM deal record, automatically creating this onboarding task. And with that, if the deal record is created from an onboarding form inside of ClickUp, you can also add all the fields from that ClickUp form directly onto the onboarding task to get even more detail of if there's things that we need to know um, as well. So it makes it super easy for the onboarding team to just get the information, not have to have a bunch of meetings of what the heck are we doing? They just get everything right to them inside of ClickUp. They begin the onboarding process, get the structure all built out, and then we're off to the races and we're good to go. And there you have it. That's how you can best leverage the ClickUp to HubSpot integration to improve and streamline, speed up your onboarding process. And obviously there are a ton of other different use cases for this integration. So lucky for you, we're actually gonna be having a webinar with Zempilot to discuss all of the best practices and ways that you can leverage this integration to help streamline and optimize your processes. So depending on when you're watching this video, there's gonna be a link in the description below. It's either gonna have the live webinar or recording so that you can watch it. You're not gonna to wanna to miss this. And if you like this video, please hit subscribe. We're gonna to continue to deliver content specifically for agencies who are trying to get the most out of ClickUp. And if you're ready to completely streamline your operations, go to zenpilot.com slash call and book a call with one of our experts. At Zenpilot, we've helped almost 3,000 agencies build more productive, profitable, and healthy teams by streamlining their operations in ClickUp. So whether you're looking to just boost productivity, increase profits, improve team health, or client satisfaction, or you're just trying to create a system that runs without you so that you can finally go on that vacation, we're here to help. Taking your operations seriously will change your life, and I want you to experience this life-changing impact. And I'm looking forward to you becoming our next agency success story. We'll see you soon. Can I make no more? I can't replace it. Trying hard just not to waste it. It's about time. It's about time. Yeah, it's about time. Yeah, it's about time.